welcome to The Life, an e-news media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen, your host. The annual IB Visual Arts Exhibition is spectacular. The personal portfolios of 15 seniors in a wide range of media is on display on the third floor of the upper school building through May 11th. The exhibit is curated by students and represents the culmination of their two years of intense study in the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. Take a bow, students, teachers, and the Visual Arts Department. Today's show will feature a big story from Bella, a junior in the upper school, about the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, Resurrection. But first, these community announcements. Solidarity in the Skies, a creativity, activity, and service program for Puerto Rico takes place this Saturday, April 21st, from 2 to 5 p.m. in the Lawrence Street Cafe. There are activities for all age groups, including hands-on art and a panel discussion with four BFS community members who've had on-the-ground experiences in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Middle and upper school parent conferences take place next week on Tuesday, April 24th, which will be a half day in the morning for students, and Wednesday, April 25th, where there will be no classes for students. The Office of Equity and Inclusion hosts an Early Childhood Educators Workshop, Saturday, April 28th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Pearl Street Library Seminar Room. Next Friday and Saturday, April 27th and 28th, at 7 p.m. in the BFS Meeting House, the upper school presents Love and Information by Carol Churchill. Reserve tickets through a link on the homepage of the BFS website. It's Blue Pride season. Come cheer our team, starting with Varsity Boys Volleyball, Varsity and Middle School Baseball, and Varsity and Middle School Softball. Check out the PAT sports posters in the building that has suggestions for games you're encouraged to attend. I'm Justin. And I'm Lily. And this, this was, was This co- Week's this Community, community Announcements. <laughs> first thing that I really paid attention to when I came over was the difference in cities. So there's this one area that has a bunch of huge buildings and it's beautiful. And then there's another area with a bunch of tiny little houses that have blue tarps over it. Because really we just wanted to get settled into the apartment. but. It's crazy because I used to look out the window as a little girl and I used to see all of these really beautiful trees and they were huge (laughs) and now you come and it's just like they're just gone but coming here it's just it's kind of heartbreaking I used to be so full of pride whenever I would land here and I would come out and it was like the heat would hit me and my hair would immediately frizz up. And I just, I felt like I was at home. And this just feels like a different home, I guess. The other scary thing was I was on the flight with a bunch of white English speaking people who were all, you know, getting on tour buses and that terrifies me because I feel like those are culture poachers right there. I really feel like that's gonna be the beginning of the gentrification of my island. I really hope that I'm wrong. And tomorrow I'm gonna go with my mom to go see this performance that They had to shut down because of Maria, but tomorrow's actually gonna be their first performance um, since since then. 
um, and it's really just dancing and music and just a celebration of culture and I really hope that'll make me look forward more to, you know, capturing the beauty of my island and not just looking at it as, wow, this could not be here when I get over it. And I realize that this is super depressing, but the reality of the situation is, is that I came here and I didn't get the immediate feeling that I was home. I just want to show you guys the view that I get to look up to. Hi, my name is Alfredo Matienzo. Uh, I'm the owner of Pasti Pueblo, a small restaurant on Luquillo. Luquillo is the name of the town. Uh, and we went through a big hurricane. <laughs> Can you tell me about your experience during and after Hurricane Maria? I don't know if it's a stage on life, but it was really impressive how to see human beings. The reaction of it after the days and weeks, they keep passing by, you have no water, no the necessities, you know. So people put the best and the worst of them out. It's like that. It was like a war zone. So you see all, you, you get to experiment all that, that other countries experiment when they are devastated by something. Yeah. So can you tell me like how you personally have been affected? It, it's weird. You get affected in both ways, you know, economically and spiritual, you know, like, and then I mean, it humbles you down, so it makes you think what's more important, like money on life or material things, or to be alive and, and to be able to enjoy this. It just humbles you down, really. Can you tell me about your connection to the island and what being Puerto Rican means to you? For me, being a Puerto Rican is more, it's more than political. It's just knowing that we are from an island that is special. The more I, I love about my island is watching the sun come up right here, man. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that God gave me another day on this beautiful place, you know. There's a lot of things happening, you know, like a lot of changes. But again, it's so beautiful and the energy of this island is so big that it makes you not think about politics and all that. It just makes you think about how beautiful is the island and how blessed we are of being here. So what do you think will change about the island and how do you feel about those changes? One thing is like we all have the same chances and opportunities. So that's one thing. We have no excuses, you know. I mean, for me, the changes are, they need to be uh, more in the politics side mm -hmm. of it. There's a lot of corruption, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of lack of education, there's a lot of uh, and when I say education it's not about being on college or, or having a degree, you know. It's like about being proud about your island and and taking care of your island and and those things might give you the same of a degree on a college. I mean I have no degree on college and I thanks God I have a restaurant but what I learned through the time, it's like the best I do, the more I do, you become more than entrepreneur, you know, you, you become more than, than selling your island, you are, you become like an owner of your island. But, but as a Puerto Rican, I think uh, the best I can do is to do things right and that way I show people that things can be done the right way and you can create something. How do you think the Trump administration is handling Puerto Rico's needs? Why treat us like a third world country and then come here and when you have the big radar on Arecibo, you have a Yunque, you have the biggest naval base. I mean, it's a good chance for me to say all this, you know, Puerto Ricans, we have to wake up in a way, you know, and, and remember that we have no rights, we have privilege, you know. Everyone should have a passport because I don't know who's coming after Trump. The day they don't want us, I don't know what, what's going to happen. But right now, Donald Trump is something, it's a plate of food you have to digest. Puerto Rico is going through a lot, through a lot, and maybe as long as we have coffee, rice and beans, and the sun coming up, and waves, and music, we'll be happy. But you know, I'm so glad that in this little island, 
those things they don't happen, you know. Puerto Ricans, we are a weird race, but there's one thing that when it's time to help each other, we do. We, we stand for each other. Instead of focusing on the bad, focus on the good. We need people like you doing these things. We cannot just rely on CNN. We are sleeping on the shed in certain things, so it's a wake-up call, this hurricane, this Trump thing. All these things are happening. It's a new beginning for us. A lot of people left the island, you know, now it's an open canvas, you know, it's the time, like, the hurricane blew away everything. It blew away the bills, it blew away everything. It's a new chance to start again. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who made today's show possible. And remember to let your life speak.